Our story begins last winter. I was living in a cabin with my pet. She's great. She gives me lots of attention and lots of love. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's good, right there. This is my pet. Her name is Nina, and I'm Sasha. It wasn't always this way. Before Nina, I had several owners. I've known Sasha for about five years now. I first met her when I was working in middle school at Holy Dog Kennel, and she had been left there by her previous owners. Um, they just kind of abandoned her there. Nina is the best. She even got me into competing. People call me Sasha Fierce. Sasha is kind of a all-arounder ski drawing beast. She also just has this like uber confidence. She never gives up. The craziest thing we've done was a race from Ninana to Fairbanks. That's 47 miles and it was 20 below. I was totally not expecting or like knowing what it felt like to go 47 miles and neither was she but she did it, and she did it in good style, and I'm pretty proud of her for it, and I'll never forget that. <laughs> we do so well together, until last December. What happened next was the worst experience of my life. Well, here's the story. Nina left me with her friend. For fun, we went out to a cabin in the White Mountains. It's really beautiful there, and it was the day before Christmas. So as you can imagine, I thought life couldn't get any better. Or maybe it could. Mmm, that would be nice. Mmm, yummy. Looks like I'll be getting my Christmas present early. We couldn't find her for over eight days, and we had people out there every single day snow machining and calling and skiing and looking for her, and no sign, like we had told all the other cabin tenants to look for her. And then I was still hopeful about three days in that maybe she just was gone a little longer than I expected she would be gone. and she was out there that whole time and I just had lost all hope. I just didn't think I'd ever see her again and I was really confused and upset like why this happened. It's just so weird that it would happen to a dog that I like completely trust and understand and have worked with so much. And when I got the call and I was in Kentucky and that she had been found by the trapper and that I was my mom was going to go pick her up, I was just like I was so relieved and so happy, and I, I can't even explain. Eight days without food or water. I was totally stuck, but I made it back home. I did it, but my injuries seemed to be getting worse. My whole leg was rotting. Here you see a healthy cell with normal functioning. When it becomes compromised, it is attacked by the immune system, and um, in the process of being attacked, it gets destroyed and removed from the body and breaks into small pieces that can be digested. Interesting. 
The scientific term for this is gangrene, and if it spreads, it's deadly. It was very smelly, and she was in a lot of pain and really depressed and kind of run down, and she was losing a lot of weight. At this point, can you guess how they fix it? Here are your three layers of skin, epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. If you get some type of injury that cuts through all of these layers, white blood cells called macrophage come and eat up the dangerous bacteria. This cleans the wound and scar tissue can form. After the doctor cut off my rotting leg, my body could heal the way it was supposed to. Within weeks I was back up, but it was really weird. What was the rest of my life going to be like? Was I still Sasha Fierce? No. No, not back here. What was that? So a friend of mine growing up is very into computer and technology and all sorts of nerdy stuff like that. And he told me about this project called the Cat Project and they design prosthetic limbs for pets. Most of their cases are in the lower 48 and Alaska was a little out of their realm of being able to help you in person. So I contacted the UAF vet med department People heard my story of survival, and I became sort of a celebrity. It's really intriguing for all of us in terms of how can we rebuild something that's going to be useful to her, it's going to be comfortable, it's going to be wearable, it's going to help to replace those parts that she's lost. For the, for the cold weather. I think it's just, just gorgeous, darling, just beautiful. So right now, this is a uh, rough print, super thin, and then we brought it here today to fit. And so I've been making markings all over um, on both sides of it to figure out where we need to shape it, where we need to cut back, where we need more room. There's two really important parts for this to function. It's going to be having a good socket and then having the uh, prosthetic itself. Whenever we get something like this which takes us out of our immediate, this is what I do as a daily routine, is just one of the great perks of working in this area. And I think one of the things I love about veterinary medicine is the opportunity to collaborate. Maybe that trap was the best thing that ever happened to me. Maybe I'll be stronger, faster, better. Maybe I'll be... Still no prosthetic, although my friends are working hard on it. It turns out that bringing together various skills in anatomy, engineering, and 3D printing takes longer than I thought. Maybe I don't really need it. I'm actually pretty okay with how my life has turned out. I was abandoned. I was rescued. I became a killer ski drawer, and then a survivor. After that, I was a test case. Now, I help others. A typical movie would show just one piece of my life. A neglected puppy overcomes the odds and through unlimited kindness finds Prince Charming and they live happily ever after. 
but life is much crazier. Sometimes life sucks, sometimes it's great. Life changes, we change, be ready for it. I'm not sure if this is the end of the story, but only time will tell. You just gotta keep going to get the full picture. Just keep going.